Thank you so much for watching today's teaching from Community Life Church. Open up your heart and see what God might say to you today through his word. Um, Pastor Rod is coming now to continue our community series. And so take a look at this intro video. Um, and you can even tap your foot along um, as we show this. It just shows some awesome community. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Community Life. It's so good to have you guys here this morning. Um, last week, we started a new series called Community, and we are actually focusing on three aspects of community uh, that are based on Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, which the three words are equip, unity, and knowledge. And I would like to read to you that passage that is in Ephesians 11, so it's going to be in the screen. It says this, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You know, last week, Pastor Rene shared with us about the importance of equip, you know, the word equip that godly community is healing. She talked about the concept of godly community can be healing. And, you know, and multiple aspects of God, how God can use community, a godly community to equip his people and actually to bring them to healing. You know, and that the word equip, if you remember last week, they talked about that in that passage was connected with a medical term for setting a broken bone. You know, when someone breaks a bone, it was literally to put a bone back in the right spot. That actually, that's part of what it was talking about, equipping. And, you know, community is healing because God can use the collective gifts of each one of us to bring healing. God can use that in all our broken places. And I believe that wholeheartedly about community, a godly community. And, you know, last week we shared of how God can equip us through community. And today I want to share with you about how a godly community leads us to unity. A godly community leads us to unity when there is three elements that work together that are God, you, and others. When there are those three, let's wait for those. Yeah, no, chat. Thank you. Wait for me. He's getting ahead. Um, when there are three elements working together, it's when a healthy community happens. You know, when we together become one with God. Can we say that phrase? We together become one with God. And what I mean we together is not only I, but us, you and I, with God, we can become a healthy community. You know, and doesn't mean that all of us have to be the same. That doesn't mean that have to be the same. But all of us, we are going to bring our unique strengths and contributions to actually and perspectives together. God can use that. So let me explain you a little bit of, you know, um, ask, let me ask you this question. Have you ever experienced, think about this. Have you ever experienced something good, but then in the midst of that, you are like, I feel like something is still missing. Have you been there before? Experiencing something good, but in the midst of that, you're like, there's still something good, something that is missing. Well, let me explain you a little bit with this. Um, at elementary school, 
my awesome mom always packed me an amazing lunch that 90% of the time, it meant that it was a sandwich, a ham and cheese sandwich. You're laughing, right? But it was like a surprise. Like every time that I opened my lunchbox, it was like a surprise of what was packed in there. So 90% of the time, it was a ham and cheese sandwich, but the 10%, there was something different. You know, and then one time I remember opening my lunchbox, and let me actually um, just disinfect here first, so there is safety first, right? All right. So I remember one time I'm opening my, um, my lunchbox, and there is a sandwich with jelly on it. Isn't that awesome? So I remember, like, you know, my mom, you know, it was really nice, always cut in half like a triangle, if you know what that means. We have, like, our Sea Life bread right here, <laughs> sponsored by Sea Life. And then we have our Smuckers, is that how you say it? Sea Life jelly. And I just remember, you know, opening my, um, my sandwich, my lunchbox, and then there was this... Um, jelly sandwich and I remember she put a little bit of butter at times just butter and you're like what so I mean I just remember that that sandwich was there and I remember eating it and I was like mmm it's good but still it's missing something right and then you know the following day week or day I remember uh, you know opening my lunchbox, and there was a quesadilla, of course, because I'm from Mexico, come on, come on, you knew it, it was coming, and there was a quesadilla, and you know, I ate it, it was happy, great time, no salsa, but the quesadilla, and then, the following day, I remember, um, you know, opening my sandwich, and there was a peanut butter sandwich, so I just remember, you know, that there was this peanut butter sandwich, and I I just totally remember when I was eating it, it was like, this is good. It wasn't crunchy, crunchy peanut butter. It was just regular one. But I was like, you know, this is good. It's a little dry. You know, you finish eating it. There was something like in the roof of your mouth. It got stuck in there a little bit. And, um, you know, I mean, I was happy with that, you know. And, um, but still, something was missing. But one day, one of my friends comes and brings this sandwich that I never heard about before, that it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And when that bread was together, and I remember the first bite that I gave, it was an explosion of flavors. It wasn't nor too sweet, nor it was too salty. It was amazing. It was amazing. And it was a combination of jelly, peanut butter, and bread when the combination of those things were there. And I know someone here is hungry. So I want to share with someone here. As you can see, I did it with clean hands. Joel, there you go. Someone skip breakfast. All right, so I'm going to give one half. There you go. Enjoy. And then we have one more. So any youth that might have not eaten or something or someone? Oh, there you go, bro. Come on. There you go. Enjoy. All right, so let's give it a hand. Good. So some stuff is better together. Let me say it one more time. Some stuff is better together in the same way that peanut butter and jelly has three elements, which is bread, peanut butter, and jelly. A godly community has three important elements, which are God, others, and you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Come on. And that is so important because we together become one with God. When we together become one with God is what God meant as community. And you might be saying right now, like, well, this was a really fun example and everything, but why should that matter to me? Why does, what is that important to me? You know, let me tell you this, is that community, godly community, it can help you mature. It can help you grow. You know, it helps other people to grow and to be able to see God through us as a community. 
You know, earlier this summer, uh, the staff, Sea Life staff, we actually got to uh, go to the Foursquare conference, and they were sharing about, there were a couple authors, that they were sharing about a new, a new book that came out no long ago that is called Good Faith, and it's called Being a Christian. And it says, uh, Being a Christian when society thinks you are irrelevant and extreme. And those guys were sharing some statistics from actually from the Barna group, which I don't know if you've heard from, from that group before, but it's similar to what is the uh, it's a Gallup, Gallup group. And there are some statistics that I wanted just to share with you, just for, for, just for food for thought. And he, they were saying, you know, our culture has changed so much that, you know, what God celebrates, the world no longer celebrates. And what the world celebrates is not what God celebrates. And this is what it says, 91% of people in America say the best way to find yourself is looking within yourself. Another one is 89% of people in America say people should not criticize others' life choices and behaviors, even if they are damaging. 79% of people in America say that people can believe whatever they want as long as those beliefs do not affect society. And then another one is among those who self-describe as Christians, the average number of times they go to church is 1.7 times per month. That's huge, guys. And these are, you know, statistics that were given by those guys that wrote this book. You know, and I just think that when the world sees us as a church, when the world sees us as believers, do they see us that we are unified? Do they see us that we are one? In community, I'm not sure, guys, if that's really happening. You know, but what does it really mean for us to be in unity with one another? Because it might be different than maybe what we think. You know, it might be that we might disagree, but still we value the relationships. Are we really in unity as believers in Jesus Christ? I'm not sure, guys. What I think is so important that we give a taste to people of what is heaven on earth. Have you ever thought about that concept of what was going to be heaven? And that Jesus has said that we can experience a little taste of heaven on earth. You know, just finished reading a book this week that I thought it was like this little, little book that is called Happy Hour. If you have about, you know, a little bit, it's very easy reading. But one of the things that this guy says, that his name is uh, Hugh Halter, he said this, the way things are in God's original created order can be visible here and now. Talking about heaven. A new way of life is available to anyone who would stop living their way instead of live his way. And one of the things he's saying is like, are you opening your home? So other people can be invited. You know, are we loving our enemies? Are we willing to stand for the truth in love? And this guy goes off and saying all these amazing things that they do, that basically he has bought a house, and the house is really, he put a swimming pool in the back, and I was like, babe, I think we need to do that. We need to put a swimming pool. He's like, no. But um, what he does is he is in this really rough area, in, in, a, in a city in the United States, and he basically put the swimming pool, and he went around to all the neighbors, and he said, you know, guys, this swimming pool is not my swimming pool. It's a public swimming pool here for, the, for, for everybody. So then he said, like, you know, sometimes after coming back from work, you know, doing construction, he said, like, everybody's hanging out in there, and he says he comes with a tray with a cheese and some food, and he just goes and serves and loves these people. And then suddenly people started coming to Christ because of that. And I was just, and he was saying, you know, that is heaven on earth. And that's my prayer with a healthy, godly community, that people will be able to experience heaven on earth. A little taste of saying, this is what it's going to be like. But I'm not sure, guys, that we are really doing what we're supposed to. That even in our differences, we are valuing people, the relationships, the, the person. And many times the way that people are going to experience Jesus is going to be through you and I. That's how they are going to see Jesus. You know, I love how Jesus shares this value in prayer by faith to the Father. It's in John 17, 20. Let's read this. It says this, my prayer is not for them alone. He's talking about his disciples, his followers. He's saying, my prayer is not only 
for my disciples. But he says, I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. You know, Jesus is talking about us, guys. He's saying that he's praying for us. Those are the people that are going to come to believe in him just because other people have shared. You know, I don't know, maybe someone had to share the message to you guys. And maybe this is your first time here listening to this message. You know what? I'm glad that you're here. And here is the prayer of Jesus. He said that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So Jesus is praying for the ideal scenario. You know, for he's saying the best case scenario is that everybody that are my followers will be one. That he was saying, that's my prayer. You know, he's saying my prayer is that they will be one in the same way that I am with the Father. So here he's talking about unity in God as a corporal thing, as a corporate thing. The objective is not that I am one with God, but that we are one with God. Let me say that one more time. The purpose here is not that I am one with God, but that we are one with God. You know, I believe that if you follow Jesus, your life is going to get better for sure. I believe that you're going to become a better person. But that's not the goal, guys. You know, Jesus did not come to this world with the ultimate goal for, you, for your life to get better. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus did not come to this earth with the ultimate goal of your life getting better. He did not come to die for your sins. He came to this world to restore the relationship with you. That's why he came. And this, our sins were on the, in the way of that. So he removed that. But that was not the ultimate reason. The main reason he came to restore the relationship between God and us. For us to be one. So godly community brings unity. Can we say it together? Count of three. One, two, three. So now, guys, if you are not in community, how can you actually be in unity? You know, if you're not in community, there is actually no one that you can actually disagree with because you're by yourself, you know? Everybody probably agrees with you. Have you ever had arguments with yourself in your mind? Have you done that? You know what? I don't know if it happens to you, but I always win. In my arguments on my head, you know, and usually what happens is on a Monday when Renee and I, we usually go on a date night, and I'm having these arguments in my head because she's going to ask me, hey, babe, where will you want to go out for dinner? And this is what happens, and I'm learning. I'm still not there. And she usually asks me, and I'm like, hey, well, why don't we go to Pizza House? She's like, oh, I don't want to go to Pizza House. And I was like, well, why didn't you ask me? You know what I mean? And then like, well, why don't we go to Olive Garden? Well, I don't know if I want to go to other. So I was like, don't ask me. Just tell me. I mean, 90% of the time, I don't really care. I just want to go with her. But in my mind, when I have those arguments, I win. But I know that that's not real, guys. In order for us to be in community, in order for us to be in unity, there are times when we actually, those things, they need to happen in real life. Sometimes people are going to disagree with you. Unity in community means we together are one with God. A while back, there was a book that came out that it was called Good to Great. I don't know if you ever read it, but the main point of this book that talks about good to great, it's saying that the biggest enemy of great is good. Because everybody, you know, you just say, you know, stuff is good, so why should it be great? And I think many times, this is what happens with this connection of God you and others. I think sometimes we just get content with being in the relationship of just you and others, and maybe God is missing in that mix. Or maybe it's the other way around, that maybe it's just you and God, and that's it. You know, just you're by yourself with God. Those elements need to be together in order for a healthy community. You know, so now let me tell you what you should do. You know, what you might be asking, so what do I need to do right now that Rod has just drilled me and give me the guilt trip and everything? Now, what do I need to do, right? 
you got to get connected, guys. If you're not connected already, you got to get connected. Don't overthink about it. Just do it. Reach out. Take the first step. Because community leads to unity. Because me, you, and God equals one. You know, maybe this morning, guys, you may not be in good terms with God. Maybe this morning you are really saying, I'm not in good terms with God. I want to pray at the end of the teaching for you. You know, to say, you know, God, I want to be in good terms with you. Or maybe you and others, you might be saying, you know what? I got burned in the past, being in community. Just so it just gets weird. I don't know. I got burned. I don't know where to start. I want to encourage you to give that step. Again, it's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If one of those elements is missing, you know it is not as it should be. So what I want is, and I know, I know, guys, I don't know you, but I believe and I want to feel fulfilled completely. I want to make sure that I feel complete. I want to make sure that in my life I thrive, that I'm not just simply surviving. I believe that part of that is being part of a godly healthy community. So now as we close today, you know, I just simply wanted just to take a moment for us to do something, maybe to take a baby step, you know, for us to be unified in Him. And one of the things that I want us to do is I would like for us to take communion, to close take communion, to say, you know, there might be a lot of points of view, many things that we believe that might be different, but I want to be able to unify in one thing that Jesus said that we needed to do. You know, that we unify in some basic truth. You know, this Sunday we are actually going to be serving communion, as you see, is set up in different stations around here. And one of the things that we've asked is some of our community group leaders are going to be serving communion and are going to be passing communion to all of you guys. And I love, you know, the very, very word communion sounds like community. Communion and community, they sound like that. You know, in the early church, they gathered together in houses. They br broke bread together. They drank together to remember what Jesus did. And that's what we're going to do this morning. You know, and if this is a new thing for you, what it means is that we are literally, we're going to eat a piece of bread and we're going to trick a piece of, uh, drink some juice just to remember what Jesus said. So let's just stand together. And I would like to ask you just to, you know, to find a station that is close to you and just take communion. You're going to be taking communion. And after that, I would like for you just to come back and we're going to sing together. So let's do that. Start going to different stations that you're going to be served to me. Breaks the power of sin and darkness. He makes it funny. 
so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless and on a wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you sing together, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the This is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus, I sing Let's sing together and sing, come on. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Heavenly Father, we want to be in community with you, Father. I pray right now this morning, Lord, I want to lift up to you, Father, those of us that are here this morning, that maybe our relationship with God is not there where it should be, Lord. I want to just pray, Father, that there will be a restoration, that there will be a humility if it's from our side to come to you and say, God, you know, I really have messed up. Really, I have been afraid to do something. I pray in this moment, Lord, that people will take that next step to say, I want the relationship between me and God to be restored. Or maybe in this morning, if there is any of us here, any of you, that you might feel saying, you know what? My relationship with God is great, but with other people, I, it just doesn't seem that it's working the way it's supposed to. So I want to pray right now, Lord. I pray for a breakthrough, Lord. I pray that there will be a boldness for people to step out of their comfort zone, to search, to reach for community, to be able to be connected with other people, Lord Jesus. I pray that if there is any things in the past, Lord, you say that you can break the chains, Lord. You can break the things that we cannot do on our own. So, Lord, I just pray in this moment for that, Lord, and help us to remember of the three elements that bring a godly community, that it's you, is it God and others. So I pray for that and I thank you so much and everybody say Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. For more information about our church, please visit our website at www.clife.church We look forward to meeting you soon.